Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Merlin Costley. I'm Dean of the Faculty of Science at UNSW. I moved to UNSW about three years ago, and one of my friends said to me, you're so lucky to be going there because it's the friendliest university, and you'll enjoy the teaching and you'll enjoy the research. And I've enjoyed it very much. But I enjoy it not just because it is the friendliest, and we do have very good peer mentoring and very good teaching where students learn from lecturers but also learn from each other. I've enjoyed it because science is really at the core of what UNSW is about. UNSW is about changing the world for the better through discoveries in science and then their translation via engineering, via medicine, and through business. And we do that very well, and we care about it very well. But what I've also enjoyed is how science is becoming more and more important in society and our role in educating the future leaders of society who have a scientific knowledge and a scientific foundation. One often wonders what the global language of the future will be, and in many ways the language will be English. But in another way, the language will be science. Every culture is important and will be preserved, but science is a common culture. I've worked in Australia, I've worked in England, I've worked in America, and of course, those three cultures have long been united. But now I'm increasingly going to the Asian countries, and there, every lab I go to has exactly the same atmosphere, the thirst for knowledge, the optimism about the future. And if you go anywhere in Southeast Asia, through India, or even if you go in some of the countries in Eastern Europe, the spirit of science is the same everywhere. And so to me, the globalization is what's made science more and more important. So I think it's a tremendous time to do science. The education system is constantly changing, but a science degree is something that as a first degree opens doors and no doors will be closed. The chief scientist, Ian Chubb, talks to us about how important it is for Australia's future to have people who understand and are comfortable in science. You don't necessarily have to aspire to be a professor of theoretical physics, although those are, it's a tremendously rewarding job if you do end up doing that. But just to be comfortable in science is enormously important for our society. So it's terrific to see so many of you here today at this talk. And it is my pleasure to introduce a great friend and colleague of mine, Gavin Edwards, who is our Associate Dean of undergraduate programs and is a chemist by training. And he'll take you through some information about the Bachelor of Science at UNSW. Thank you very much. Over to you, Kevin. Thank you, Merlin. For those of you who were here a little bit early, and I'll flick back to it, we started off with this slide and I put it up there not just because of its timeliness but and not just because of what Stephen Hawking has said but because I find him truly inspirational and also because it gives you some idea as Merlin has said about the true global nature of science and one of the things we're going to talk to you about today is science and UNSW and our position in the world. The University of New South Wales as a university is a member of an organisation known as Universitas 21. And this is an international network of 23 of the leading research intensive universities throughout the world in 15 countries. So we are associated or allied with some of the best universities in the world. And in fact, in one of the most recent ranking systems, the so-called QS ranking system, UNSW has been ranked 49th in the world. And that places us up against some of, the, some of the greatest and some of the best and most established universities you can think of. On the Australian stage, we are a founding member of what's known as the Group of Eight. And the Group of Eight are the major research intensive universities in Australia. And that's why the Good Universities Guide describes the University of New South Wales 
as one of the heavyweights of Australian higher education. We are a complete university. We offer you an intensive and rich experience for your tertiary education. If you delve further into the Good Universities Guide, you see that certain key areas are highlighted as being major areas for UNSW. We are leaders in research grants, and certainly in the Faculty of Science, we are up there with the very best in this country as far as being competitive in receiving research grants. We are research intensive and we are extremely proud of the fact that as a university our staff focus not just on teaching but also on their research. Our staff have some of the best, some of the highest qualifications that you will find in terms of the number of staff who have, for instance, doctoral degrees. I'll mention later our staff-student ratio is as good as you will find anywhere. And the next one you might think sounds a bit odd. We are ranked because we are relatively tough to get into. That means that if you're thinking of doing science, we are second to none in the sector in terms of being a destination for science. So if you want to do science, there is no better place to come to than UNSW. We're a culturally diverse organisation, not just in our staff but in our student body. Our graduates start with wonderful salaries and we have positive graduate outcomes. I've mentioned research. The University of New South Wales is a leader in research and certainly in science. We're amongst the best in the world in things like DNA technology, quantum computing, wildlife management, new drug development, cosmology. You think of the Curiosity, the Mars rover beetling around the surface, things like that get our physicists very excited. Amongst the world leaders in psychology and mathematics, we're doing all sorts of things. We're developing new medicines, we're developing new materials, new materials both on the macro scale and also on the nano scale. We're looking at ways to repair and save the environment, looking at things that might sound bizarre like turning plastic bags into steel. Our research is incredibly rich and diverse. I mentioned quantum computing. Now, I love this slide. I really do. It's got two of my favourite quotes. I don't know if they're true or not, but it doesn't really matter. They're fun. Computers in the future may weigh no more than one and a half tonnes. Yeah, sure. You've all probably got a computer in your pockets. Then, I think there's a world market for maybe five computers. Yeah, sure. It shows how the world has changed. And quantum computing shows you how it's going to continue to change. Professor Michelle Simmons from Physics leads a team that are world leaders as part of an international effort to try and make computers that are smaller, faster, better, smarter and more secure. And Michelle was actually the New South Wales Scientist of the Year in 2011. And what this is, in fact, is the world's smallest transistor. And Michelle and her group are looking at ways to develop this as a part of these new quantum computers. We're also world leaders in climate change. We have a climate change research centre. We're headed by people like Steve Sherwood and Andy Pittman. They look at climate change. They look at what, how it happens, why it happens, atmospheric, terrestrial, oceanographic research and they are extremely important in the overall scheme of things in Australia because these are the sort of people who advise the Australian government on the development of policy. As does Richard Kingsford and people in his group. Richard heads up the Australian Wetlands and Rivers Centre and you may have seen Richard on television relatively recently um, in a range of specials. What the Wetlands and Rivers Centre do is they look at our wetlands, they look at the wildlife, they look at the threats and risks that are facing the biodiversity in our wonderful and fragile environment. 
and you will again have seen them in the news relatively recently publishing some of their work on the importance of our wetlands. Some other things. Professor Veena Sahaj-Vola, who you may remember from The New Inventors, her group have been looking at ways to take plastic bags and use them in steel. Now, it might seem particularly strange, but as a part of steel, you need a small amount of carbon. And what Veena and her team have been looking at is that, well, rather than take plastic bags and shove them in the bin and have them end up on landfill, why don't you take some of that waste plastic, because plastic, after all, is largely carbon, why don't you take that waste plastic and use it as a source of carbon? And just the other day, when the Eureka Prizes were announced, Dr Rob Brander from our School of um, Environmental Sciences won a Eureka Prize for his work on currents and rips. And some of the work he's done involved going to beaches like Bondi and releasing very obvious but benign dyes to actually see how the rips behave. As a university, we have teams working on making new materials, making brand new things that have never been thought of before, looking at sustainable methods for making and processing materials, looking at biopharmaceuticals, ways to basically make bugs help us to make pharmaceutical agents. We have teams looking at new ways to make catalysts. We also have a sustained effort in nanoscience and nanotechnology. Nanotechnology is the technology or the science of really, really tiny things. And it's thinking about ways that you can develop and build machines and build devices essentially from atoms and molecules up. And we have interest in things like nanotechnology, nanoelectronics, nanomedicine, trying to think of even new ways and smarter ways to target and deliver drugs. Science also looks at human health and allied disciplines. We, we have a school of psychology looking at things like behavioural science, psychological disorders, neuroscience and cognition. We have a school of optometry and vision science. And apart from being a professional discipline that allows you to become an accredited optometrist, they do research in ophthalmics, contact lenses, and looking at new ways to prevent microbial infections on contact lenses. But I mentioned that UNSW is a complete university. We are proud of our research and proud of our research intensiveness, but we are also equally proud of our commitment to teaching. And we have a long-term commitment to absolute high-quality teaching. We have received awards both locally and federally for our teaching. Our staff are all committed to the being the best teachers they possibly can, and we are committed to using the best technologies to enhance our teaching. And it underpins all of our courses or subjects and everything we do. The Good Universities Guide, in fact, says that we are recognised throughout the world as an innovative and important centre of teaching, of learning and of research, again emphasising the fact that we are a complete university. We have a range of programs, and I'll talk about some of the science programs in a minute. They are diverse, but they are also career focused. One of the things about our programs is they're not just aimed at teaching you to be scientists, to go on and get PhDs and do things for our own research, but our programs are structured to enable you to be as job ready as possible. We have fantastic student facilities. As you wander around this campus, you'll notice that certain areas are cordoned off with fences and there are big machines behind them that are doing some building. We don't only have great facilities, but we have a commitment to ensuring that we constantly update them because the only way that you can learn state-of-the-art science is in state-of-the-art facilities. So I've told you that we are 
committed to teaching. But so what? What's important is not that we say we're committed to teaching. What's important is what students think of us. And the government's My University website provides a measure of student satisfaction of teaching. And you will see from this that across the scientists, we are either neck and neck with our closest competitor in the sector, or we are streets ahead. And one of the reasons, I think, is that we have the best staff to student ratio of our, of, compared to our competitors in the sector. As a university, we have a commitment not just to maintaining a good staff to student ratio, but to improving it. We're actually out there actively hiring staff every day to try and ensure that we have the best teachers and that we have an excellent staff to student ratio. So why come here? As I've already said today, you're probably here thinking, well, why should I think of coming to UNSW? I'd turn it around and I'd say the, the question you should be asking yourself is why should you even think of going anywhere else? We are an outstanding university. We are one of Australia's leading universities. Remember the group of eight and we are constantly ranked very highly. We have an international outlook, not just in terms of our international student um, numbers, but in terms of our international collaborations in research. Our researchers don't just work within the university, they collaborate broadly around Australia, but also across the world. We have fantastic research facilities, we have excellent industry links, we have cutting edge equipment, and as I've already mentioned, we have some of the best laboratories you will find anywhere in the world. So what is UNSW, what is science, and how do they compare? Well, we are a big university. We have somewhere around 50,000 students, of which just over half are undergraduates. We have about 16 or 17,000 postgraduates, and in general, about 21% of our students are international students. That means we have a fantastic and diverse student body, and you'll see that not just in the classroom, you'll see the diversity not just when you sit in the lecture theatre, but you'll see it when you look at the clubs and societies that are available for membership, and you'll see it in things like International Food Night, where you will see a range of stalls with international foods and you'll realise what a fantastic and vibrant culture we have at this university. Science is a part of UNSW, about 6,000 students. Male to female ratio is about one to one. As I say to my lectures, when I was a lad, which is not that long ago, but and that's when the front row always laughs. But when I was a lad going to university, as a science student, you would go into a lecture theatre and it would be almost exclusively male. Thankfully, that has changed. We provide opportunities and we are, as I, you can see, essentially gender balanced, as we should be. Within science, about 4,000 students are at the undergraduate level. So what is science? Well, science is things that you think about and you would normally associate with science, but it's other things as well. We are a complete and diverse faculty. We have a school of biological earth and environmental sciences. We have a school of biotechnology and biomolecular sciences, so we cover the biology aspects, we cover the environmental aspects. We have a school of chemistry. We have a school of maths and statistics. We have a school of physics. But equally, we have a school of aviation. We have a school of material science and engineering. Engineering is part of science as well. In fact, science underpins all of engineering. We have a school of optometry and vision science, and we also have 
one of the country's leading schools of psychology. So, thinking of coming to UNSW, what degrees are on offer? Well, we have two main general degree programs. We have the Bachelor of Science and we have the Bachelor of Advanced Science. And my colleague, Professor Julian Cox, will soon be giving a talk on the Bachelor of Advanced Science if you are interested in, in that as a, a path. They are in many ways similar, but they do have differences. And one of the ways they differ is the entry ATAR. What you'll see up here is you'll see 2012 ATARs. Now, these are meant to be indicative. They can change slightly. In both of these programs, or both of these degrees, you have a choice of majors. And a major is a very carefully thought about and very well structured set of courses or subjects both at introductory level and at higher levels that mean that once you have completed the degree, if you do a major in chemistry or physics or mathematics, you can put your hand up and say that you are qualified to call yourself a chemist or a physicist or a mathematician. So how do the BSc and the more advanced level of the degree differ? Well, the basic BSc is a three-year program, whereas the BSc Advanced is a four-year program. And the extra year in the advanced level degree is a research honours year. That doesn't mean if you enrol in the Bachelor of Science that all pathways to research are cut off. You can, of course, add on a fourth honours year if you wish. Both programs are very flexible. The advanced level degree does offer you access to some higher level uh, courses. And here's something interesting. The advanced level program offers you the chance to do research internships. What this means is that as you go through your undergraduate degree, even from your second year onwards, you can do mini research projects. So you can work in collaboration on your own small research project with some of the world's leading researchers. You don't have to wait to honours to get a taste of research, get a taste of your own research project. There are two other general degrees we have that are similar to the Bachelor of Science. There's the Bachelor of Science International. And the science content of the BSc International is very similar to the Bachelor of Science, but it's now a four-year program because it also contains a sequence of language courses, as you might expect from a science international degree. We expect you to learn a language. And there are also electives on globalisation that are taught by some of our colleagues from other faculties across the university. And the fantastic thing about the Science International degree is you don't spend all of it here. You actually get to spend two semesters at some of our partner institutions overseas on exchange. Of course, if you decide that you want to pursue research, you can add an extra year on. And there's one more generalist degree. The Bachelor of Science and Business, which, sorry, I couldn't resist that, is a brand new degree for next year. In fact, it's so new you won't find it in the printed UAC guide. You'll only find it online. Again, the science content is similar to the BSc, so there are about 23 majors. It's a three-year program, so honours in science will be a fourth year. But what it also contains are some courses in business. There are four foundation courses on economics, accounting, marketing and management. So our colleagues in the Australian School of Business have said that to be a scientist in the business world, you really do need some sort of understanding of some principles of business. And you get an understanding of some of the basics of economics, accounting, marketing and management. And you can also then get a bit more depth in some more marketing, some more management or business law. And there's a fantastic course on ethics that you can do as a part of this. 
we sort of expect the ATAR for this will be about 90. Now, because the program is brand new, there is no existing ATAR to base it on, but we're looking at an ATAR of around 90. I talk of majors. All of our majors have as underpinning knowledge mathematics, maybe chemistry, biology, and maybe physics. And when you look at these majors, some of them will be familiar because they will be similar to the courses or the subjects you've studied at school. So there's a major in chemistry, there's a major in mathematics, there's a major in biology, there are majors in physics, which we call physical science. But if you look, there's also a stack of other things that you mightn't have thought of. Marine science, climate dynamics, geochemistry, vision science, pharmacology, neuroscience. There's a whole range of options open to you within any of these science degrees. As other degrees go, if maths is your passion, then there is a Bachelor of Advanced Mathematics. It has a really high ATAR, up around 95. It's again a four-year degree that includes honours. And you can now study and specialise not just mathematics, but you can actually choose specific sub-disciplines within maths. So you can specialise in pure maths, you can specialise in applied maths, statistics, or something called quantitative risk which is a blend of mathematics plus also some business and finance courses. And then we have a whole range of specialist degrees. The School of Aviation has two. The Bachelor of Aviation Flying and the Bachelor of Aviation Management. Yes, one of them will teach you how to fly a plane. The other one won't teach you how to fly a plane but it will teach you everything you need to know about how to run an airline, so how to manage the airline business. We have a Bachelor of Science in Biotechnology, Bachelor of Engineering in Material Science and Engineering. Yes, you can do engineering as a part of science. A Bachelor of Environmental Science, and within environmental science you can specialise in a range of areas. A Bachelor of Medical Science and a Bachelor of Medical Science lets you specialise in things like anatomy, physiology um, and pharmacology. A Bachelor of Medicinal Chemistry. That's a relatively new degree as well. Medicinal Chemistry is for those of you who are interested not in pharmacy, which is essentially running a shop, but in the pharmaceutical industry, in looking at how you go about developing new, new medicines and new drugs and how you look about bringing it from the research phase all the way through to the clinic. We have a Bachelor of Science in Nanotechnology. I've already mentioned nanotechnology in the various branches. We have a specific program in that which brings together material science, chemistry and physics with a little bit of biology. And then we have our two professional areas. A Bachelor of Optometry, Bachelor of Science, which gets you professional accreditation as an optometrist, and Bachelor of Psychology, which at the end of your honours year allows you to become an accredited psychologist. There is an associated degree, the Bachelor of Psychological Science, that also allows a pathway into the study of psychology. So what this means is you have lots of choice and an outstanding amount of flexibility. So as we can see, with all of these single degree programs, they can be flexible and the general science degree, so the Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Advanced Science, Bachelor of Science International and Bachelor of Science in Business can be very flexible. They offer you lots of different majors to choose from. The more specialised ones tend to be a lot tighter and tend to prescribe the courses that you do much more rigorously. There is choice and you can choose later 
and you can even migrate between degrees. I'll mention some more about that in a minute. The specialised degrees, as I've said, tend to be more prescribed. You can transfer to the more generalised programs if you want, and a number of the specialised degrees do lead to professional accreditation. Another pathway to study allows you to combine science with other degrees. And I was going to list all of the dual options that we have with science, but that would have run over several slides and it would have been very, very small font. You can basically combine science with not quite, but almost any other pro degree program in the university outside of science. You can combine science and art, science and social science, science and commerce, science and education, science and engineering, science and law, science and music. And you can combine a range of other science-based programs with others. Why would you want to do that? Well, it's a great idea for students who have interests in several areas. You might be interested in arts and science. It allows you to combine cross-disciplinary areas. But the other great thing is it saves you time. Because a Bachelor of Science will take you three years. A Bachelor of Arts will take you three years. If you study them concurrently or together, it only takes four years to get both degrees. And that's because of a little accounting trick that we use in terms of your elective choice. So studying two degrees as part of a dual program arrangement actually saves you time. Now you might have seen some of these ATARs go up and you might have thought, oh, I'm not going to get there, I'm going to miss out by that much, as Maxwell Smart would have said in a television program many, many years ago. Well, you may have heard about something called HSC Plus. We actually have at UNSW a bonus point system that actually rewards your performance in your year 12 subjects and gives you a few extra points towards your ATAR for entry to UNSW programs. You can get a maximum of five points. So if you see that a published ATAR is 96, if you've done the right combination of subjects at HSC and you score sufficiently well in them, you can actually get a lower ATAR than the published one and still um, be successful. Why do we do this? Well, experience has actually taught us that if a student is interested in a Bachelor of Science, and has studied largely science courses or subjects at school, that they actually do much better in the Bachelor of Science than a student who's done essentially no science in school and suddenly turns around and thinks, yeah, maybe I'll do science after all. Because studying science through school actually gives some background and gives some of the culture, of, helps to develop from an early stage some of the science culture within the student. Now what you will see if you go onto the university website and you look at the HSC Plus site is you'll see that the number of bonus points awarded is program specific. So you will see that some of the science programs will award bonus points for some HSC subjects and others will award for different ones. So you can have different selection ATARs for um, different programs. We also have UPP under 21, University Preparation Program under 21. And this is one of the flexible entry pathways for students who have gaps in their knowledge or who maybe fall short of the ATAR for entry. It's suitable for students who are highly motivated and who come from a range of different backgrounds and the, the less than 21 basically means that this is the program for you if you are going to be under 21 as of um, March next year. If you've got any more questions about the UPP under 21, ask at the faculty desk in the Scientia.
when you enroll in a program and you do your degree at university, you get your degree, you're going to then eventually go out into the big wide world and get a job. These days, the employment market is not just you versus a couple of other people in Sydney. The global market, uh, sorry, the employment market is essentially global. And one of the ways that we at UNSW are seeking to enhance students' employability is through something called the Diploma of Professional Practice. And this is a concurrent diploma. What that means is it's something that you can study and enrol in in addition to your Bachelor of Science or Bachelor of Advanced Science or any of the other programs, and you can study it alongside the degree that you're already studying. And what the Diploma of Professional Practice gives you is it gives you experience and it gives you knowledge in a range of other areas that aren't as obvious in, say, your chemistry or physics or maths courses. So more work-related skills, global citizenship, leadership. You also get to do work placement, so work, workplace-based projects. Now, you might think that I'm going to enrol in a Bachelor of Science and I'm going to do it full time. Surely enrolling in a Diploma of Professional Practice on top of that is going to impact on my studies and I'm going to start failing course. It's all going to be dreadful. No. The DPP has been very, very carefully tailored to ensure that the courses that you do in the Diploma of Professional Practice have an absolutely minimal impact on your studies in your main degree. So what it means is the courses that you'll do in the DPP, you'll be doing over summer and in breaks, and you'll be doing them sometimes in very compressed mode. So you can do them concurrently, and one should not impact on the other. As a part of the Faculty of Science, of course, while we welcome all students, one of the things that we do pride ourselves on is excellence and we pride ourselves on the number of high achieving students who choose UNSW as a destination. And certainly more and more top students are choosing UNSW as their destination over any other university. So we have a talented students program which is a specially tailored program for students who come into the university with high ATAR. It's for largely advanced science students and it's by invitation from Merlin Crosley, the Dean of Science. If you don't make it into the Science Talented Students Program, but then excel at university, there's something else. There's what's known as the Dean's List, and that's like a high achievers list for students who do really, really well once they're here. UNSW, as Merlin has said, is a friendly university. But the transition from university, from high school to university, is sometimes not easy. Because you might go from a case where you've been in a relatively small school with relatively small numbers and a teacher who looks after you and basically helps you every day, to a range of courses where you might suddenly find yourself in a lecture theatre like this with 400 students. And you'll be sitting there and thinking, oh, and you'll suddenly feel swamped. And you might, even though it's a big theatre with lots and lots of people, you might suddenly feel very alone. Well, to help you settle in and help you get acclimatised to university life, the Faculty of Science has a peer mentoring program. And you can sign up for this in semester one and you can get to meet and work with and discuss your university life with a science student a mentor, someone who is in second or third year. And this will just help you with your transition from school to university. No, they won't do your assignments for you, but they can actually help you with 
finding things like tutors and finding things like library and navigating around university websites and so on. So much choice, so little time to make up my mind, so many degrees, what will I do? Oh. One of the things that we find is we find that students coming from high school suddenly feel that they have got to make a life-defining choice, that they have to do a Bachelor of Science rather than a Bachelor of Science and Business, rather than a Bachelor of Medicinal Chemistry, rather than something else. They have to decide, do I do a dual program? Do I do a single degree? There is so much choice. Well, if you enrol in a program, and if you suddenly change your mind, ordinarily you would need to reapply through UAC for another program. But the University of New South Wales has come up with an internal scheme called the Internal Program Transfer Scheme. And what that means is you can actually move from one degree program to another, generally after your first year. It's performance based, so it's based on your university marks. But if you enrol in the Bachelor of Science and you do sufficiently well, you could suddenly transfer into the Bachelor of Medicinal Chemistry. Or if you're in the Bachelor of Medicinal Chemistry and you suddenly think, psychology sounds like something I want to do. I've done a psychology course as an elective and I really like it. I could transfer from Medicinal Chemistry into the Bachelor of Psychology. We have an internal mechanism whereby you can do this without ever having to go back to UAC again. So the Faculty of Science, through all of our programs and all of our courses, give you a very sound knowledge base. But one of the other things that we have embedded in all of our course, courses are a range of important graduate attributes. And these are the harder to define and more generic skills that are necessary for success and necessary to make you highly employable. Things like critical thinking, an ability to think logically, writing skills, presentation skills, research, innovation, even things like patience and perseverance. These are all the sort of graduate attributes that you will pick up along the way. And these are the sort of things that are valued highly by employers. Now, ultimately, whether you do one degree or two, whether you stay on and do honours or a PhD, at some stage you're going to go out into the big wide world and get a job. And if we ask employers what they want, it seems they don't really want very much. They just want to know that you can do the job. So do you know some stuff? Do you have some skills? Do you maybe have some experience? They want to know you will do the job. They want to know you're motivated. They want to know you're actually interested in the position you apply for. And they want to know that you're going to be a good person for their organisation, that you have the sort of culture and values that will fit in with the rest of the people they have. And we believe that the University of New South Wales is the best place to get these skills. We will give you the academic qualifications. We will give you the knowledge base. We will give you opportunities for work experience and research experience. We will give you the sort of graduate attributes and social skills. We have a fantastic set of clubs and societies that you can join that will let you meet like-minded people and interact and let you develop some of the other aspects that are important along with just the simple academic skills. We also give you access to a network of professional societies. From time to time you will get lectures and you will see presentations by leading people from some of the professional societies associated with some of the disciplines. And this leads to the University of New South Wales having the best employment rates for its graduates compared to our closest competitors. And this again is compared uh, 
courtesy of the My University website. And where do scientists end up? Well, they end up in science jobs. If you look at the people who do a Bachelor of Science and then go out and try uh, go out and get a job, you will see they will end up in the sort of research institutes and places you would think of. They will end up in pharmaceutical companies. They will end up in working for places like Blue Scope Steel, working for um, maybe petrochemical companies, but they'll also end up in a range of other areas, working for banks, working for Qantas, working for financial institutions. So science is not just about white coats and working at a bench. It is about opening up a range of opportunities and a science degree is one that will ensure that you have the most opportunities possible when it comes time for employment. You could work almost anywhere. You could work for the government. Hey, you could stand for election and be in government. We actually need more scientists in parliament to allow our, our, government, our, our politicians to make rational science-based decisions. You could work in banks, research centres, private practice, universities, hospitals, museum, industry, airlines, schools, media, the list goes on. And one of the reasons why UNSW and science at UNSW gives you a good, op, um, good prospects for employment is that we have fantastic industry partners. We have industry partners not just with small companies but with some of the world's largest. Industry partnerships with Rio Tinto, BHP Billiton and others. One of the things we're asked about is do we offer scholarships? And yes, we do. Very quickly, both UNSW and also Science offer scholarships. And if you go to the scholarships website, you will see that we offer scholarships based on academic achievement, but also based on a range of other factors. So getting a scholarship for UNSW is not just based on having the highest ATAR possible. There's a range of scholarships available. And Here's something you might not know, or you might necessarily think about. You can only get a scholarship if you apply for it. When it comes, that might sound silly, but when it comes time to assess these scholarships, we look at them, we look at the, the applications, and it turns out that there are lots of people who don't even think of looking for scholarships. So go and look and apply, because if you don't try, you'll never know. So that's about it. What should you do from here? Think about what interests you. What have you done at school? What have you liked? Think about the careers you might like to enter. Talk to family and friends about their opinions, their experiences. Talk to your family about what they see as being good opportunities. Read as much as you can. When I was a student thinking about careers, you had to go to a careers office, you had to go to libraries, you had to look in books. These days, it's all on the internet. You can do all the reading you can from the comfort of your own home. You don't have to go out. You can do things like explore the science website from your own home to find out more about the degrees that we have on offer, to read some of the testimonials from some of our students. So if you have any questions, I'll be available after, as will Merlin and Julian. But equally, over in the Scientia building, there are lots of people on hand to ask you, answer your questions. The UNSW Handbook Online for 2013 is available. You can find out more of the specific de details of the degrees there. Our website has lots of information on courses, career profiles, graduate profiles, and some of our current students. And I'd like to finish again with Stephen Hawking from the Paralympics when he said, look up at the stars, not down at your feet. Try to make sense of what you see and wonder about what makes the university exist. Be curious. Thank you. <laughs>